All right, so first thing first, um, we're going to talk about fossils, different types, where they come from, how they're formed, um, and then how to identify them because ultimately your job at the end of this is going to be to be able to not only tell me what a fossil is, so I'll give you a, a, a sample set, you're also going to have to be able to tell me where they came from and how they were formed. Okay, but before we can even get into any of that, first things first, I want to get into what a fossil is. Okay, now it's something that's dug up originally. Um, and it's evidence of once living organisms. Okay. Now I want to be careful and, and make sure that we know it's not necessarily the organism. Okay. It's evidence of that organism. So it can still be footprints, which we would consider a trace fossil. Okay. Or it could be something like a burrow or droppings of an organism. Again, those are fossils, um, just a different kind. Okay. But we need three conditions to be met in order for a fossil to happen. Now, by the way, this is one of your quiz questions, so this is going to be something you're going to want to have in your notes. We need to have hard parts in order for a fossil to happen. Fossilization needs hard parts. Now, hard parts not necessarily mean bone. Um, it could also mean an exoskeleton, like a trilobite's outer parts, or um, you know, soft tissue technically could be as long as it gets buried fast enough. So that's the second part, too, is it has to be buried rapidly. Okay, we talk about deposition, and the, the, the sediment needs to be deposited very, very quickly in order for this to happen. Okay. Lastly, this needs to be sealed from bacterial destructive agents, things that can destroy the skeleton and the organism before fossilization can happen. Okay, if these three things happen, we're going to get a fossil. Okay, now I want to point out that this is an extremely rare circumstance. Fossils do not happen frequently, and for that reason, then, uh, they're difficult to find. Okay, um, one of a one of a great example we've looked at Anomalocaris, my favorite creature versus history, and we've talked about him a little bit. The reason that he was fossilized along with all of those other creatures in the Burgess Shale is because all of those organisms, or the majority of them, had exoskeletons, hard parts. Okay, they were buried rapidly. Actually, a lot of scientists agree that that um, that that outcrop of fossils was a result of an underwater uh, landslide or mudslide. Okay, so that buried them rapidly and sealed them from destructive agents. So, anyways, I want to get on. I want to talk about the different types of fossils now. The first type we'll talk about are unaltered hard and soft parts. Okay, this means that the whole organism is preserved and the soft tissue, hard tissue is there. Okay, here's a bunch of different um, notes on these. One, these are super, super data rich, but they're even more rare. Okay, the whole premise of the movie Jurassic Park is based off of this idea that a mosquito could have eaten dinosaur blood, had, a, had a, uh, a blood dinner the last time before it got buried into um, amber and uh, turned into a fossil. Now, again, it's a future DNA source, uh, potentially. We'll talk more about that when we get into the evolution, but for right now, that's an unaltered so hard and soft parts, okay? Then the other category, okay, so unaltered hard and soft parts was the first part. Now, the second part is altered hard and soft parts, and this is going to be a uh, whole bunch of different types okay the first type is called recrystallization now in the literature that you guys have gone through they've also called it permineralization okay it's the same term those two are synonymous but basically what they are they're, they're very common probably the most common okay um, these are usually organisms that are buried they already have hard parts and what happens is those hard parts get recrystallized or permineralized into a more stable um, compound okay uh, this usually happens soon after burial. Uh, some examples are, are here for you guys, and I actually have a couple other examples. And actually, one of the ways that we can tell uh, about these fossils is their extreme detail. Okay, now I'm just pulling this up so I can show you guys some of the great detail that these fossils carry. Um, for example, waiting, waiting. This fossil here, okay, um, if you look at this fossil, you can see the ridges in the clam, you can see the paleo line, you can see the mouth, you can see all of the fine detail in this, and, and for that purpose, this is a recrystallized fossil. Looks exactly like a shell, like one you'd find at the beach, but it's not. It's been recrystallized into a more stable, harder form, okay? Uh, another one would be this recrystallized rock. Again, it was buried, okay, by sediment, but what's in there you guys have probably seen this before. This is crystallized, uh, recrystallized coral. Okay, so again, this was an underwater organism. 
just two examples there. Again, a way to identify these is that they're very, very um, detailed, and that's how we know about recrystallization. Okay. Now, the next part that we're going to talk about, um, altered hard and soft parts, replacement. Okay. What that means is that the organism at one point had died, got buried, and when it got buried, there was a void that dissolved out. The organism itself decayed, went away, but what was left behind was a hole in the ground in the shape of that organism. And what happens through time, that, that hole in the ground, or that hole where that organism was, gets filled in with precipitate. As water flows through underground, it precipitates out different minerals, causing, again, very fine detail. Um, one example are these, these flowers here. These are called crinoids. Uh, basically underwater flowers. Their stems are very hard and so we have a lot of examples of those. I actually have a ton of those in class. We'll be talking about those and looking at those. So altered hard and soft parts, the, the, the next type we're going to call replacement. Okay. Um, third type, carbonization. Okay, what carbonization does is basically it's an organism, dies, gets buried, and what's left behind is a thin black film. Okay. Uh, most of the matter gets buried away and what's left behind is carbon. Okay, these are relatively common. Now, the easiest way to ID these two ways. Okay, one, they're flat. They're typically flat. They're typically two-dimensional. Two, typically they're black, okay, because carbon is black. Um, show you an example of one carbonization fossil looks like this. Okay, again, you can see the outline of a fish. Now, we, we see fish. We know they're three-dimensional, but this one is two-dimensional because it died, got buried, and all of its flesh bone got dissolved away but what was left behind was the carbon and so we have that stored in the rock record and another one again this is a little harder to see but you can see where a fern actually is on top of this specimen okay that again is carbonization because you look where the white isn't there's actually black there and that's that's carbon left behind by that fossil okay um, so carbonization is another one of our types that we're going to be needing to learn about the next type we're going to talk about cast and mold okay these are very common um, basically what happens is there is a cast which is like the cake pan I'm sorry which is like the cake and then the mold which is like the cake pan so this would be the cast I'm sorry the mold excuse me mold would be like cake pan this would be like the cast and what happens is the organism dies makes an imprint on the ground and then that imprint gets filled in by sediment and on one half you get the cast one half you get the mold okay um, Again, this is my analogy that I was kind of goofing up, but cast would be the, the, the cake, so that would be this thing here, and the mold would be the mold of the exterior of the organism, okay? Uh, I have a really good example of this, actually, of a trilobite. Uh, it turns out trilobites are very, very common in the state of Wisconsin, state fossil. And so here is the outside imprint of a trilobite, okay? You can actually even see its little eyes. There's one of its eyes there and another one on the other side. This is where it was pressed into the ground. Now, again, if you want to see this, I have this in class. Pretty cool. But this fossil is a very, very well-preserved uh, trilobite mold. This is the outside of the organism. So this would be like the cake pan. Somewhere else, again, some lucky person has the other half of this where they have the cast, the outside that looks just like this trilobite. Okay. And right along with cast and mold, I'm going to put in another one um, very similar to this. It's called internal molds. Okay. So if you imagine one of those spiral shells that you would see on the, on the shore of an ocean, that would be what the inside of it looks like. Okay, actually what happens a lot of the time is these organisms get filled with sediment, okay, and then when that organism dissolves away, the sediment inside is preserved, giving us an internal mold. Okay, again, I have one. These don't really typically have a lot of detail, um, but you can still see, you know, here's my example. Okay, again, there's the interior of a fossil, or of a shell, and you can see the line of the interior here, and then another line up, okay? That's an internal mold. So, wanted to show you all of those so that you know what they are, how to identify them. But then the other thing that I wanted to show you, and this is the last part really, are trace fossils, okay? Trace fossils, like I mentioned at the very beginning, are fossils of these once living organisms. Now, it could be tracks of the organism moving, okay it could be burrows of where the organism lived either way evidence of once living organisms now these are actually really interesting for us because we can take a look at them and come to understand more about the organisms the environments that they lived in and so forth okay 
Uh, lastly, I want to talk about sedimentary structures. Now, th these are structures that show us what um, environment these may have also looked like. Okay, so these are things that tell us about what was happening in the time of deposition. Again, this is another connection of uniformitarianism. Okay, if I see these structures current day, that means that if I see them fossilized, the same structures I create them now created them back when this organism may have lived. Okay, so for example, mud cracks, uh, these are current modern day mud cracks. This is fossilized mud cracks. Just for you to see this, if we see an organism that's buried in mud cracks, this tells us that there was a organism that lived in periodic wet dry conditions, okay, but it was a non-marine organism, okay. Uh, another one is graded beds, okay, where we have a fining upward sequence, this is called. And basically these are evidence of the shorelines moving in and out with tides or also as sea level rises and falls through climate change. These graded beds will tell us that if we find an organism in it, the organism lived in shallow ocean conditions. Okay? Ripples, again, tell us the organism lived in a transitional area where it was between ocean and land or water and land. Just like we would see today, the bottom right picture here shows you a crab current day walking on these ripples. You see them where the water meets the land. So if we see a fossilized organism in that exact environment of deposition, it tells us that organism probably lived there. Okay, cross beds are terrestrial. They're uh, wind blown. They show us where organisms were. Okay, this can also show us river flow depending on the types of cross beds. This picture here is a side view of wind blown cross beds that show us uh, if we find an organism fossilized in that, it was probably a terrestrial organism. Okay, so that's everything and anything you're going to be expected to know about fossils, fossilization. Great review. Please view that before you uh, take your quiz on this.